how can I just use this piece of paper in the catalog to determine the correct punch profile for my application. In this video, what I'd like to show you is how the bend limit graph is laid out, and then go back and show you how to use it. Let's take a look at a typical bend limit graph page that you'll see in the catalog. You've got the profile shown over graph paper, and in the upper left hand corner you'll see a bunch of catalog numbers. Those catalog numbers represent that profile, probably different tip radiuses to it, or some other flavor, but all those catalog numbers look like this punch. And in the lower right hand corner, you'll see a WL being called out on that profile of the part. So that's the part that we're going to work with to superimpose onto the punch tip and see if it actually works with this profile. And keep in mind, this chart is actually one to one. So if you see an inch called out, it's actually an inch. Now I think we're ready to actually take a part and let's put it on the bend limit graph. So how do we superimpose the image of our part onto the punch profile to see if it works? So I either have a drawing, a detailed drawing that shows me what I have to superimpose or I actually have the part in my hand. And either way, what I'm going to pay attention to are inside dimensions. So make sure if it's a U-channel, you're taking your dimensions from the inside of the part, not the outside of the part. And as I put it over the punch tip, because everything is a one-to-one -one scale, I can see if it works. And in this case, I've put the part over a 3.75 inch tall sash punch. And you can see it obviously isn't going to work. We probably, you didn't have to look at it too close or figure out the angles and the corners to figure that out. But now if I just turn the page and I go to the, the next punch that I see, it'll be the 5.75 gooseneck punch. And if I simply superimpose the punch or the part over the punch tip, I can clearly see that that one will work. And it's very simple to page through the catalog and put your part right over it. Or if you have those dimensions, you can quickly see your interference points and look for those on the chart to determine which punch is best for you. Although a bend limit graph isn't going to replace any type of 3D modeling or even 2D modeling, it is a simple way to quickly get an answer on what punch will actually work with your application. So if I had a part that's not too complicated, I could find that punch profile that works quicker than I could with automation. If you like what you saw, like us on YouTube. If you have ideas for the future, for our topics, or any comments, Please send those to the email address that you see on the screen. And technically speaking, now you know.